G'day YouTube, my name's Lance and welcome to Bundy Bear's Shed. This video we're doing today, it's, uh, it'll be in two parts um, and it's, it'll be two parts because we'll split the injection pump resealing up into dismantling and inspection and then we'll do another video on assembly. And now, it's part of the 135 uh, Massey Fergus 135 um, six speed restoration series, um, which is a tractor that I'm restoring just because that's my hobby. <laughs> I like playing with old tractors. It's got a three cylinder Perkins in it, an AD3152, which is a direct injection um, diesel engine with a, um, with a COV rotary pump on it. Now, the A3152 that's not direct injection, it has the same pump. Um, most of what I tell you here is going to be exactly the same for the three cylinder pump, four cylinder pump and six cylinder pump. The only real difference being the head here that is more or less the ports or the has a number of pipes on it. Um, it can have, where we have three here, for a three cylinder engine, it'll have four for a four cylinder engine or a six for a six cylinder engine. So most of the rest is exactly the same. We don't have the advanced mechanism underneath on this pump. Um, they just didn't have it. Um, if you do have a big advanced mechanism, you know, a small bolt and a big bolt, then a, a little screw that you can screw in and out like on a David Brown, well, you just undo the screws and that will pop out. You'll feel a spring-loaded ball and that will pop out the bottom. But we're going to fit a Sparex S57135 seal kit. That's my preferred one. I've been fitting these for years. Never a problem. They're a good kit. Sparex sponsors our channel a little bit sometimes. Um, they're not sponsoring this job um, or this tractor restoration, but they have helped me in the past. Um, good quality stuff normally. Um, so look, follow along with this. Um, I might put a couple of links. I've, I've done an earlier video. If you look on my YouTube channel, Bundy Bear's Shed, there's an early video on how to, um, how to reseal an injection pump. And that was off a Massey Ferguson 65 tractor. And look, it's been very popular. Like we're up, oh, we're way up there in the views. It's, it is a very popular video, but it's an hour long and I look back on that video now and I think, well, I could have explained that better. So um, let's hope I've learnt something. That was four, four or five years ago. Now, it was getting back anyway. And, um, and yeah, like I say, I'm looking at that. The diesel shops all give me a dislike. They reckon I'm a prick because I'm showing you how to reseal your pump when you should actually take it into them and, and all that. But... Um, I've been a tractor mechanic for over 40 years, and um, 41 years this year in March, and um, we did a lot of this stuff in the bush, saved us bringing it in. If the tractor's starting okay, running okay, and it's just leaking like around, around here, or leaking out the shafts at the top, um, this'll be okay. This tractor did have a little miss in it now and then, but you could bleed it, and the mist would go away, and, and it was powerful, like a, a run a pump, no worries at all. Um, the last 1,500 hours of its life with a broken air cleaner hose, it ran a pump. So um, once you bled it, there was no trouble with the tractor. Um, it had run nicely until it got more air, and then you bleed him again, and away it'd go. So that tells us that the pump was working fairly well. It started, oh, you just touched the key and it started. So. We're not expecting anything major to be wrong with the pump in here. Um, there's a few things that we will change that I'll, I'll have to get from town, which um, Queensland Tractor Spares um, is a business I own, but um, we have these bleed screws and like a new lever where that's worn and little knickknacks like that. We have it in there and many places will have that stuff as well. So follow along. Hopefully you get something out of it. Um, I'm hoping this set of videos, the, the disassembly and the assembly, has have helped to you. And um, part of the reason I do these videos is 
to encourage you to have a go yourself. Um, part of the fun of restoring something or keeping your own gear going or um, just keeping the show on the road is being competent or, or um, having the help to do the job yourself. And if you can reseal your pump yourself, you've got a great sense of satisfaction out of it. Just watch carefully. I'll try and explain the little interests, intricate bits and pieces. I couldn't think of that big word now. <laughs> Bloody hard to get good help. And um, I'll try and explain what I know as I go. And, and um, in the comments down the bottom of the video, let us know what you think. And um, yeah, if you want to know something, I, I do answer all my um, YouTube messages. I, I read them. Sometimes I only read them twice a week, three times a week, depending on how busy we are. But anyway, look, enjoy this video. It'll be part one of two parts, and, and in the Massey Ferguson 135 restoration series, it'll probably be video 11 and 12, or something like that. So, but um, anyway, see how we go. Now, if you've been following along on the Massey Ferguson 135 series, I explained about taking this off and checking the timing marks when you're removing the pump. So I've showed you how to get the pump off. That plate may or may not still be off on yours. I left it off on mine because I knew this is what I was doing. I've made a little plate to bolt my pump to, only because I do a lot of them and I do them for customers if they want them done. And, and um, I'm always playing with tractors, so I thought oh, I'll just take the time and do a plate. But um, you can hold it gently in a vise or whatever you like. But look, first I start off with just loosening these um, bleed screws. You'll notice this one's all chowdered up and the bloke I bought the tractor off, um, he said, yeah, oh, you bleed the pump and away it goes, it runs better, but yeah, so that's, um, that will be replaced when we get to replacing it. Um, I have a look around now and a couple of things that are hard to hang on to later, um, I undo now, or not undo, but just loosen. So, if we come around the back here, there's a screw there that holds the rotor in or holds the cam in. I've got you in frame, I believe. Yep. I just bump that loose now. There's two underneath here. Um, there's a 9 16th and a 5 8. I'll just loosen those fellas off. The 9 16th. And look, the, the idea behind this is just while the pump's sitting there solid, um, it's just easier to do. I need a ring spanner on that. And that's all, just, just crack it and see. These are the little fellas here. Um, these on the delivery valve, they're the same. Just loosen them off. And this big fella here. Sixteenth, yeah, fifteen sixteenth. That end, fella. So we've just loosened the hard bolts, <coughs> and we'll start disassembling the pump now. And yeah, step by step. Okay, now I've turned the pump around, and um, this is the side. What you can see now is the side you would see when the pump is bolted to the tractor. So you can see the bleed screw here, there's a lower bleed screw, and we're all zoomed in here. Now, you may well, your tractor may just be leaking on these shafts here. This is the throttle shaft with the, with the screws. That's your high and low idle screw. Like this one here, 
decides how much that can come back and that it's your idle screw. This one here at the back there, that decides how far you can open the throttle up, how much tension it puts on the governor spring and that's your high revs. There's often a plastic cap over that so you don't open it up and rev it too hard. But if you're leaking around the top gasket here or around these two shafts here, you can do this little part of the job on the machine. So if you get a 5 16 spanner and just loosen, loosen the two shafts, and they sit down on a little flat and there's a dust seal then the lever then a shake proof washer and then the nut so this is your stop shaft this one it'll stay where you put it so same on same thing, loosen the levers off, take note of where everything is. If you're not sure, um, yeah, if you're just not too sure about where everything should go, uh, most people have a phone nowadays that they can take a photo with. So take that off the top there and you can see there's diesel or something around this one. Now, this fella here, these are 3 8 oh, yeah. Like I say, this is a job you can do on the machine. Now, that will come up. Now, I used to do this a different way and someone through YouTube showed me well, what I think is a better way than what I was doing it, so I'll show you that way. So there's a couple of little fibre washers there. You get new ones in the kit around these two, around these two screws here. So, so look what they suggested, and it, it is a good idea. Is pop these fellas down and lift the cover up over those shafts. Now how I used to do it was I'd look in under here and I'd see where the springs were hooked up and things like that. And we'd go from there. So, so with this here, they are a little firm, they have O-rings on them. So we have to push the, well mainly the other one, this is a, this ends a stopper one, but anyway, that sits there, the little hook, the, the little plunger here, goes in the hook there. Now, of utmost importance, look at this. There's a screw that we haven't undone and a lock plate we haven't undone and that comes out of just there. So yeah, there was a little screw floating around there. We're just lucky it didn't get, end up in the governor. Okay, you've pulled the top off. <clears throat> now this is very important. If you look at the lever here, you'll see one, two, three holes. Take note of which hole it's in. It can be in any of them. Okay. And if I bring you around the end here, this little rivet that holds the other end of the spring, there's three holes here too. Take note of which hole they are in. Um, the other way I've done it is put these shafts up in the, in the top and then come down and you've got to try and hook that little spring up. But someone that's been doing it for years, they said, oh, they do it this way. And look, it, it, it is a better way to do it. So, so look, particularly, take note. So we're in the middle hole. So on the shaft.
on the plate, we're in the middle. So you see my little diagram there? So in the, on the shaft, I'm pointing, I've got a little arrow drawn pointing to the one closest to the pivot. And then in this one here, I've got a little arrow pointing to the centre. That is important. If you get that wrong, you'll get your tractor together and it won't rev. You know, it'll, you put the throttle back and it'll stop and you pull the throttle on and it won't rev to its full revs. If you get that the other way, too tight, it'll rev and you won't be able to idle it back. So make yourself a note of where they are. Pumps can be different, um, but yeah, doing it this way, you shouldn't have any trouble. All right, well, once you've taken particular note of that, you can unhook the spring from out of the rivet here and pull that little rivet off. The little rivet has a small hair spring on it to provide a little bit of tension. And if it's leaking up the throttle shafts, there's two O-rings here. So if you just want to reseal this top cover only, you can, while these shafts are here, you can pop the O-rings off, put new O-rings on. Um, on the stopper shaft, you can see the O-rings, put new O-rings on, make sure it's all in line with the new gasket. Then you line them up and you bring the top down again and put your levers back on. That is all you need to do if it's just leaking out the shafts and the top gasket. It's a 20 minute job. But anyway, we're continuing on. So I'll just throw all this over there on the bench. Now the stopper. This, um, this lever here, is your stopper and it pushes and stops your machine. So as the so as you pull the stopper, it turns on this cam that pushes on that. That's your metering valve there. So that pushes on that and you get no um, no throttle. And what can happen if there's a bit of moisture in the system, um, a little bit of water's got into your pump, you push him down there and shut him off, and you pull the stopper up, it comes back up, but this gets stuck. This metering valve doesn't move. It gets stuck in the off position. And even though, even though you move the throttle here, and you're pulling on that plate, that's what happens there. The plate pulls on the governor, but the metering valve stays put. So, there's a little adjustment screw here. Don't touch it, no need to. Um, but yeah, so this just pulls out. Now the gasket comes off in the bin. And there's a couple of lock tabs on here. Now, You can see just down there, that's where this little screw and lock tab was missing. So normally, there's a little lock tab and that little screw is screwed in down here. So at this stage, we undo that little screw at the back. We undo the lock tabs on these two bolts. I'm going to find my FBH. They're only very weak lock tabs. And with your 3 8 spanner, undo these long bolts. Keep getting me big mitts in the road, eh? And that's the plate. 
So the one down away from the stopper was a full hole. The one on the stopper side is a slotted hole. So now this plate will come out and this plate, it sits down onto your governor. So that'll just lift out now. And the metering valve will come with it. Now, your metering valve, you can see a little, you can see a little mark there. And there's a little flat there. So it's probably done a lot of a lot of time there. Now, polish this up. You can polish it on a piece of pine board, but use the finest, finest um, emery if you do need to clean it up. You know, if it's had a little bit of rust on it or something like that. If it's buggered, you've got to replace it, but you won't be able to replace that on its own without a diesel shop. So, um, you can just polish that up, but sometimes, if um, people say, oh, I went and I, I turned the tractor off last night, then this morning I went and it just won't start, I've got no fuel coming out. It's as simple as this little fella sticking in the bore there. So that's got to, see how that can, it'll just drop down under its own steam. It's got to be very loose. So we'll take that out. I'll take this bleed screw out now. Up the front here. This is our return. I probably should have undone that earlier. Now some of these have a check valve in, some don't. This one doesn't, it's a straight through. Straight through fitting. Okay, we'll turn the pump around in the vise and we'll have a play with this other end. Well, this is the end of the pump that the fuel comes in. So it pops in through here and in under this plate, the 516 spanner will fit these bolts. We've loosened this off earlier. If not, try and loosen it off now. It's just the bugger to do later. So we can pull this end plate off. Another thing I haven't mentioned is start off with a clean bench. Um, by starting off with a clean bench, if there's a little spring or a little bolt or something left over, you will notice it. If you put it on a bench that's full of junk, there's a little spring or a little lock tab or something like that left, you won't notice. Then you'll be messaging, saying, my tractor won't start. Okay, so we'll hop. I thought I'd cut out some of the undo and the bolts and that, but then I thought, no, nah, I'm not going to. It's just, um, we'll do it in real time and give you some idea of how things go. But that, that's the end housing. There's a little bit of wear in there. You can just feel a, just feel a lip. And if I wipe it with me very hard, I'll get rid of these screws. You can just see a swirling pattern around here where the vein pumps got, that's better. You can see it now. And if you can feel any wear there, it's probably buggered. There's a new end cap that we sell in at the shop there. And see where they run this rotor here? This is a, um, this is a little vein pump. Um, where this runs around and around in the housing here and the veins pop out, um, you can see where it marks here on the alloy. So you have this running on a soft alloy housing. The new end caps that we can supply now, they have a little steel insert in there. So once you put the steel insert in, um, you're okay to go. So we'll put that aside for the moment. Take note, there's a little roll pin there and the roll pin locates 
the outer of the pump here, this the outer road, outer ring of the pump. So I'll find an O-ring picking here. There's a big square rubber O-ring in here. That comes out. And the veins on the pump. They normally this bloody come out. And you can break them quite easily. So they I'll see. See, see how the pumps, which way does this pump turn? This way. Yeah, so the fuel comes in, in through probably a little hole in here. And as it pressurises the, the fuel, it pushes, forces into a smaller gap, it pushes it up the front here. But yeah, they're free enough in there, it's just that they don't want to slide out at the moment. And I've got me tiny pliers up the front. I'll see if a little... There we go. So that's half of your vein. And this is the other half. They sit like that. We'll probably put new ones in, I'd say. We'll put new veins in. There's Sparex number in a, and on mine I'm going to put a new end cap just because of the wear there. If you haven't got that wear there, just go for your life. Um, keep it as it is. Right, these little delivery valves, they don't really need to come off. But we'll take them off. Now, they have a steel washer. Now, I've seen people take that off and put a copper washer on there, but they should have a steel washer. And if you've got a leak around here, around any one of these three, um, start the tractor, run it, loosen this off, I loosen the pipe off a little bit on this one, loosen it off until it squirts out and loosen and tighten, loosen and tighten a couple of times and oftentimes you'll get it, it'll be okay, yeah. So take note of where they go. There's one up, one down, one around. They can go on the bench out of the way. And that's all we need to do there. So we've taken off the tops bare at the moment. This end's bare at the moment. That's okay. Um, we'll turn it around and we'll undo the other end. Okay, we're at the other end. This is the end that you would have taken the gear off. Now, there is a special tool for this and like I say in my other video, I never knew there was a special tool for it. And um, all I did was take a couple of screws 5 16th UNF. Screw them in here. There's an Allen key inside there. And I just try and just bump that loose. leave the screws in there because we'll have to no doubt put it back together again. Now this screw, this Allen head screw, it has a spring washer. So 
We have the bolt out. Now it has a funny, it's a bit different to a normal spring washer. So that goes under the head of the bolt. Then inside there's a little flat. There's a washer that goes up the end of the shaft and it has a flat on it. Now you have a master spline to, to help you time where the pump goes. And with that master spline, this little washer will slide out. That's in there. Um, with these flats, that lets you slide it up the master spline and tip it into place. It doesn't appear to have any right or wrong way to go in. Now this here should come out. Now, if you're leaking a lot of diesel into your engine oil and you don't think it's leaking out of your fuel lift pump, chances are it's that seal. Most probably that seal. So if your pump's not leaking at the top and it's just leaking diesel in and you can get the pump off, all you have to do is pull this off, put a new seal there, put that back and put your pump back on. You're laughing. There's a little bit of wear little bit of wear on that seal surface there but look that'll polish out no worries with a nice soft seal that seal's not too bad oh look it's hard compared with a new one but I don't believe it was leaking and that will polish up nicely with a bit of a bit of 1200 paper or something like that I think so now we've got the pump Looks like that from the top. So now we can loosen these bolts here and I think it may be best to turn this around for this. And we can undo the screws underneath the pump now. So we'll, I'll try and get you out there a little bit. Working around the camera, it's something else. Especially when you've got to zoom in. So this screw here and this big one down here. Those ones, they hold this head in place. Now it can only go in one way, you can't really bugger it up. And what I do sometimes here, I don't know if we're supposed to do this or not. So I'll put a little bar behind there to help, help lever that out. They get quite tight, I've had these quite firm in the past. Sometimes people bash them and things like that, and they, <laughs> they, are, they do get hard to get out. Okay, so now it's turning, I might be able to turn and wriggle.
this is quite hard, but yeah, don't run across any numbers and muck around there. You should be able to do it. Come out. We're leaving the cam track exactly where it is. The bolt's still in the cam track. There's a reason for that. But this must have a little burr where the O-ring is there, I would imagine. There is your main pump head. They're the rollers that run around the cam track. Last time I never pulled this apart. Um, this time I'm going to just to show you what's in there really. But well, you can, there's a plunger under here and I have had them stuck with a bit of moisture. So yeah, I often wish I showed that in the first video. But anyway, we'll get to that. Now That shaft that you can see hanging down there, that's off your governor basket. We can get that out shortly. Your cam track here, it can come out. Now, it can only go back in one way. The bolts only line up one way, you cannot do it another way. So, there'll be an arrow. See the arrow? The arrow there. That says the direction of rotation. On your pump on the side here, it's got direction of rotation. So if those two go to the right, there's no worries. You can also, there we go. You can also see the shadow marks from the circlip. That's handy too. Um, yeah. What we're looking for here is where the rollers run around the cam track. We're looking for anywhere that the hardening's gone. If the hardening's gone, your pump's um, on its way out. Um, but anyway, we'll keep moving. Now up the spout here, I'll bring the camera down for this. This is very important. So. When we look up the spout, on the circlip there, can you see the, I'll see if I can zoom in a little bit on that for you. Now this, the top of the circlip here has got a rounded edge. So, yeah, this edge here is rounded. This edge here is flat. Now when you pull the pump off, you line that flat up with the A, where are we? Bloody hell there. With the A, B, C, D, E on the pump, I think it was E from memory. And see there's a heap of letters on the pump. Different ones get timed to different things. Um, so, what it's very important to do at this stage is scribe a line exactly where that is. So to get this basket out, the governor weight basket out, you've got to pull that circlip out. Um, but if you're going to time your engine exactly right as it was before, you need to mark that. So I usually run a little mark there and if you look in the side here the 
there's a line there, but that doesn't line up. So I will actually scribe a line on the side there in line with the flat edge of that circlip. And that's how we're going to time it all again. I'll, I'll turn it around in the vise. I'll do that line, then I'll come. Right, you can see I've got a little V pointing to the edge of the circlip. Now that's exactly in line with the edge of the circlip. Take time and get that right. No matter what you don't do right, get that right. Right, now you've taken particular care to mark where that circlip goes. You can hop in here with a set of circlip pliers. Remove that circlip. Probably should have any bigger circlip pliers, but anyway. And you can see there, if I stay in focus, there's your round end on your circlip, and there's your square one. Sometimes my fingers get in and it puts the whole show out of focus. The camera gets a bit smart. So that's the line that you just lined up. And on this circlip, you can actually see like a little rub mark there where the, where the um, housing or where the cam track came up against it. But anyway, you can't sort of bugger that up really for that line to be round there. It can only be one way. Now this governor basket, it can come out. Now, there's a little, I'll zoom out now, we've got it out, and we won't go so fuzzy so quickly. There's an O-ring here. You can just see the, see the O-ring in the groove. Where are we? A little O-ring there. That's worth popping out. You can hear a kookaburra in the background. And that comes off, and these are your little governor weights. Often you don't need to muck around with them really. They can be a handful. And this governor plate, when this governor plate sits in down through the hole, it actually sits down. It actually sits down and the flats on here there's a recess, there's a recess down there for that to sit on. So some people don't get that lined up, I find. And um, yeah, if it's, if this is around the wrong way, you can't get it in properly. Or if it's like that, it probably goes in, but it's not right. So you look for the flats before you put this in. And you can see a master spline there and a master spline here. These master splines, that's where the, um, where did I put it? That's where this main drive goes on. You can't get that wrong, it just won't go on. And then the spline at the other end here, it goes into the head of the pump. You can't go wrong there either. Okay, that's given us a bare housing now. There's nothing left in there but to take the seal out and, um, yeah, give it a good bath. We're right down to the nuts and bolts, the bare, the bare shell. Now, I'm just going to pop this in 
device here if I can. I, I've got to try and find a way of, of filming this. <laughs> Bloody things. So that might be okay. Alright, I'll get set up and we'll see if we can hone in on this. Okay, I think we're fairly well in frame there. Now this is the head of the pump. Now this goes round and round and it gets driven by the main shaft and the fuel pressure from the pump at the end there, the vein pump, it puts enough pressure in here that pops a couple of plungers out and pushes these rollers out against the cam track. And then with these out against the cam track, when the pump turns and the ramp pushes those rollers back in, it goes pop in, it pushes those two little rollers in and that gives you pressure for your injector. So depending on where you've got that turned with your timing to which injector it wants to send out to, like if it's, if it's lined up with um, yeah, number one, it'll fire on number one, depending on, on where it's turned. So you're playing with fire in here. Now, I've put a little bit of chalk mark in this line here. And you'll notice that line is dead in line with the gap in that circlip there. Remember that. Right? Now, <clears throat> turning this adjusts how far these rollers can come out. And so, if you don't need to go here, probably don't. But if you have, um, if you have, if you've done everything else and you're not pumping, well, this is probably where you're going to end up. So, what we do here, well, this is how I do it anyway, people have a fit. They're just double hex screws. Oh, come on. There we go. That's tight. So we've loosened them off. We've taken note where that is. Now if they were going to fuel the pump up, that little line there, they would turn that. And that actually determines how much flow you get. So if you're hotting your tractor up, that's what you do. So originally we were sitting around there somewhere so take note of that though, that's, that's particularly important to take note of. Now this top housing, it'll come off. And now this here, this gap so they can get their tool in and, you know, and turn that to, to raise or lower the quantity of fuel per stroke. Nothing to do with revs, just quantity of fuel. All right. So that fella comes off. Now, you see in here, because this is on a ramp, if we go right around here, those rollers can't come out as far because the distance from the shaft to the bottom of the ramp there is smaller. Then when you bring it around here, they can have more travel. So they'll come out against the roller and, and they'll have more travel. So I'm trying, <laughs> I'm just trying to think of how I can explain it easy for you. Um, but look, when that comes around, it comes around there, the rollers don't run on the cam all the time and you can see, where are we? If you can see on the cam the dark spots, that's where, that's where the rollers don't run. Where are we? There. Ha! <laughs> Working backwards. There. The rollers don't touch there. So depending on how far these rollers are allowed out to how much chuff it goes in, so how much it can actually push in. So take note of where that is. We know we're lined up next to the number there. Now these rollers, they sit in a little housing here. 
don't muck them up. And also take particular note that the pointy end of the ramp is here and the, the fat end of the ramp is on the other end. So take note of those things. You can probably see it better there. So we'll take them out of the way. Now this is what can get stuck. See down in the guts there? If you've had a little bit of moisture in your pump, there's two rollers, they'll plungers. Now what happens is the pressure from your transfer pump at the end works on the curved surface area here and pushes these out and in turn that pushes the rollers out as far as they can go. So, in theory, oh, bloody thing fell out. Bloody hell, Lance. So, you can see, see on the back there where the where this plunger sits. So, yeah, the the fuel from the vein pump at the end pushes this out. Then this goes out as far as that little frame lets it go. Then, when you hit the ramp, you have two of these little plungers out as far as they, they're allowed to go, then they hit the ramp and they go pop. And when they go pop, that's when you get your fuel charge. Now, if you've had water in your system, these can be stuck in that bore. That's just how it is. So, you can see there's a little line. Oh, look, I'm not sure that you can see that. Yeah, see that little hole there? That's how the fuel gets up and back. So it lines up, it, it goes in, it goes in through this port up here, in there, wherever you are, <laughs> and comes up that centre tube, then as the pump turns a little bit, it blocks off the return. And so that fuel can't get back, it's trapped. And there's a once it opens up to fire out, say number one port or something like that. Well, this will have just lined up just in time. That goes bang and puts a squirt of fuel out there. So, um, <clears throat> for people that say it's missing on number one or number two or number three or something like that, it must be the element. It doesn't. These only have one element. So, if it's pumping on number one and two and it's not pumping on number three, it's either a buggered delivery valve, if it has a delivery valves, or a stuck injector or something like that. They only have one plunger and that lines up for to fire on number one, number two, and number three. All right, that's as far as we can go with that. You can get a spanner, I think this is a left-hand thread. You can get a proper socket to go in here and undo that and replace this head. Um, I see Sparex has got heads, I've never fitted one, no, I've never felt the need. Now this here, that should be loose. Um, normally this ring, it slops around like a cock in a sock and, a, um, and you can just work out um, where it goes. You have to take note, have to take note with your little with your little roll pin here. Your roll pin there locates it. So but normally that ring is loose, so I'll be freeing that up. Okay, we'll move over to the end cap now. Now we loosened this off before. There's a little bit of spring tension there, but not much. I'm telling you to have a clean bench and mine's a bloody mess. Spring comes out. Big spring. Then down inside there, come on. There's another fuel strainer that a lot of people don't know are there. Now this here has holes in it. Look at that. There's a hole there. Not to worry, in the Sparex kit you get a brand new one of these. So 
I like to assemble this back on the bench in the right order. Now under that spring, on the bottom end of that spring, there's a little locator. Listen to those birds. Now, where can I get the light down there for you? There's a little plunger down there. So what I'll do now, I'll just bump that down on the bench. And by turning that down on the bench, mine has a big spring and a little spring. I have seen them only with one spring there, not the two. And there's also a guide down there. On the bottom of the guide, there's a little fibre washer, a little ceiling washer. But also down here, there's a small plunger. See that there? Now there's a flat side on the plunger. Actually, it's flat both sides, this one. Um, you can just see a little witness mark there on where the spring went. Take notice of little things like that. And when you're putting that back together and back in, that must be free in the bore there and just slide in under its own weight. So I'll bring you around onto the bench and we'll just lay that out as it was, just to give you a, a reference really. Put the seal kit behind it. Right, so just for reference, there's your end plate. We undid the main plug, your main fuel filler, or your main fuel entry. It had a copper washer on it. It had a big spring with a locator that went that way, the big side towards the big spring. We had two little springs we have the sleeve and we have the little valve down the bottom. On some pumps, can I see it on this one? It should be, sometimes there's a, there's a little hairspring down the bottom to stop that going too far. Oh yes, I think I can see it. There we go. And that little spring there, it sits down the bottom and it's got a little line, yeah, it's got a little step across it. And that's to stop this little plunger going down too far. Look at the rubbish in that spring. Poor old thing. Should have an extra buddy 20 horsepower when we get it going. So there you go, you have your little tiny little hair spring, your plunger down through here, that must slide under its own weight. The single or double spring there, depending on what your pump has, the plunger, the big one. Oh, and this here. So the spring actually sits down, down in through the center of that. And this fitting actually holds that spring in. That's a quick, easy little bit, but yeah, don't forget that filter. Um, and this little spring here.